Hey team, what's going on? Benjamin Button coming at you uh, with another video. In this video, I just briefly want to talk about research design or starting to talk about research design for some of you who like to get out there and read scientific literature and what it can kind of tell you about a study and then I'm going to talk about a study that I pulled up that has the long-term impact of um, veganism on B12 and vegans. There's a lot of studies out there whether it's the Seventh-day Adventist or the epic Oxford study that look at long-term um, information and associations risk factors on large groups of people and um, these studies are really um, labor-intensive and they can give us some really interesting data um, about what happens as generalizations but what they can't do is isolate variables and rule out um, confounding factors so when we use these studies a lot of people use them in inappropriate ways to justify their own causes or their own ideologies and that's not really how science is meant to be used um, it is used that way because humans because egos because belief system um, because uh, surety in one's uh, logic progression and kind of the whole idea of scientific method in science in general was to test our own fallibility so when you start looking at studies I would like to encourage all of you to go and see what kind of study it is is it a longitudinal a longitudinal <laughs> excuse me is it a cohort is it prospective cohort is it retrospective is it cross-sectional and get to familiarize yourself with how these designs are studied and there's a lot of resources out on the internet um, where you can kind of see the plus and minuses of different types of research and there are for every type of research plus and minuses there's no research design that is perfect um, or even perfectly executed and I would say especially uh, not only due to human error, which happens, but also especially when it comes to dietary standards and nutrition. We don't have all the technology we need to measure things. Humans are incredibly lacking in um, habit and in maintaining regularity uh, in the way that kind of some of these variables might need to get a really clear picture of what's happening to someone on a nutritional level. Um, not looking at risk factors and you know looking at baseline nutrition okay so that said I want to talk about this particular study and why I think it's a really good study for looking at the effects and impacts of veganism so a lot of times when they're doing these big cohort studies they're looking at people who are long-term vegans and long-term vegetarians and they tend to rule out people who um, dropped out of veganism for complaints of issues or and that gives us a great idea of what some people who can adhere to the regimen and do okay with but it doesn't give us an idea of what these types of diets do to somebody switching over and trying to remain long-term on veganism so this particular study I'm pulling up wanted to look at the impact of B12 status on um, vegans and long term five years I would consider anything over five years long term because that's kind of at the point where most people's livers stop being able to store B12 um, so it's important that those go seven would be better but five minimum um, and they use two different groups they used a group that was not taking any supplementation through food products and then they used a group that was eating vegan food, food products that had supplementation and the reason why this 
is interesting is because they started with people who were not vegans. So they said, can you commit to veganism for five years to do this study? And so they took omnivores and put them on a vegan regimen. And then they watched what happened to their B12 levels as time went on. The revol results were very interesting in my opinion. Um, it showed a clear decline in B12 status for both groups. Uh, the group that ate foods that were uh, supplemented, their decline was not statistically significant. Now, you also, when you hear that, have to look at how many people are in the group. I think it was something like N30, not a huge sampling. It gives us an idea of a trend, but I believe you would see something very differently from my own research and knowing how important large sample size are to normalize statistics. That's important. Um, but nonetheless, they still had a decline. Then if they looked at the group without supplementation, and I think this is particularly important for people who are trying to be natural vegans who um, think they can get it from the produce that hasn't been washed or from, I don't know, I've heard a bunch of ran random strange things like oral sex and stuff like this. They had a very significant decline into levels that were not healthy for humans after five years. Um, and I also think this shows for people who do choose veganism to either yeah, maintain supplementation or eat foods with supplementation in them to maintain neurological health. There's a lot of talk going around various circles on the internet about how B12 is not necessary, that you can get it from, I've heard all sorts of crazy things, everything from unwashed produce to um, uh, oral sex to um, somebody was saying cleaning their cat. I was like, what, where is this coming from? I personally know three vegans, one's an ex-vegan now, who have permanent neurological damage from not supplementing with B12, trying to live some ultra natural lifestyle on only fruit. And I'm talking like their hand is numb and it's never gonna come back. And they started having also like subtle speech problems. And there are a couple of YouTubers, I'm not gonna put out names right now, I might make a video about it later who are very clearly, I've looked at their videos now, and I've looked at their videos four or five years ago, and they didn't slur before, and you can hear slight slurring in their speech now. And that is B12 deficiency, and that is, I'm assuming, they might have had a stroke, I don't know, but it's most likely a B12 deficiency issue. And I just want to encourage anybody who is not supplementing on B12 to not wait until their levels are low because that's like trying to drink water when you're already dehydrated, but way worse. You want to be preemptive. You want to upkeep your neurological health. So if you are choosing to maintain a vegan diet, keep up your fatty acids. I actually would recommend most people try EPA focus on more fats than low fat and you know keep up your b12 um don't <laughs> do whatever you want but don't listen to some of these crackpots because it's dangerous it's really dangerous and um i know i've come out the other side and i've seen a lot of things and i get a lot of people emailing me i don't put out their emails or talk about it but every week emails 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 even just this week more emails because I posted a video again and then I've got so many people crawling out of the woodwork going, oh my god, I've had so many problems. We have to do something about this. Um, as far as I want to go about it, I just want to keep talking about it and keep having a conversation so that there's plenty of information for people to make their own decisions. If you want to make decisions about lifestyle that are dangerous, fine, but listen to all the stories before you just decide 
what's the truth?